it's crazy. I like saw that the other day. I'm like, what is this? What is this new software? LibreOffice doesn't work. What the fuck is that? Okay, everybody. Alright, so we got Marcus Rapp with the Electra Project talking to us about Electra and its relationship with Puppet. So, thank you for your introduction. Uh, so I will start right off with uh, two questions. Uh, first, uh, who has uh, heard the talk yesterday about Electra? Is there someone? Okay, yeah, there is quite some. Uh, thank you. And uh, who has heard of Electra before this talk yesterday? Is there also someone? Okay, oh, there actually are. Oh, perfect. Okay, so, um, yeah, I will uh, directly dive in. Uh, so as you all know, um, Reliable uh, editing of configuration files uh, is not so easy or not always uh, so easy. Uh, and this is not only a problem which is uh, faced by configuration management, but is also a problem faced by applications themselves. In the moment they want to do uh, integration and uh, access other configuration files, they, are basi they have basically the same problem as configuration management uh, has. Um, the focus of Electra is, is, is wider than uh, only to be used uh, by configuration management because of this, uh, but in this talk, configuration management will be the main focus. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, as you heard in, in the talk uh, before, for example, uh, Ogeas cannot access uh, some files uh, uh, like uh, YAML. Um, and yeah, and uh, as you know, uh, there, are, there are many incompatibilities uh, between uh, the different platforms. So the idea and the long-term goal of Electra is to integrate the technologies as they are. And so we have a lot of brilliant parsers and validators out there uh, which are waiting to be used. And, and the main goal is uh, that uh, configuration management and other tools should use exactly the same parsers as the applications to do. Um, and uh, so Electra also introduces a specification language. I cannot go into uh, detail uh, during this talk, uh, but uh, so uh, things that are, can be done in this in the specification languages, you can specify which options are there, you can document them, you can specify which, which defaults are there, so if, if I remove the option, what, what does this actually mean if, if no option is there, and so on and so on. So all this information which is actually needed by, uh, for doing configuration management should be in this specification. So that's the long-term goal uh, of Electra. Um, so, and what also can be done because of this, you can also uh, patch uh, through. So, for example, uh, if, if you have uh, here a configuration management tool, we will uh, see this uh, later then, you can uh, patch this through to uh, some specific uh, file. For example, using the Orgeas parser and, and, and doing something so you can decide uh, which parts uh, of, of, uh, of the configuration maps to, um, to which parts of the configuration files. Okay, um, so to end uh, this high-level overview, this, um, uh, this in technology, technology integration can be used uh, for, this, uh, for configuration management. And, and the border is quite well defined. So Electra is, is something to, uh, which runs on the nodes and the distribution between the nodes uh, happens within the configuration management tools. So Electra doesn't bother ab about uh, this, about this uh, deployment, but it uh, bothers about uh, how the configuration works uh, on, on the individual uh, nodes. And, yeah, and the focus in the talk will be, uh, uh, will be Puppet, but actually uh, you could use Electra with any configuration management tool as, yeah. So um, I will talk uh, today about not only one tool, uh, about Electra, this will be the, the first part, but also about uh, Puppet Electra, which is uh, basically, a, which is a second project using Electra. So let us start uh, what Electra is. So Electra is a small, fast uh, library. Uh, it doesn't have any dependencies but it has many plugins and these plugins have dependencies. 
It does not uh, introduce a daemon, so it does not introduce any uh, security problem. Um, and its uh, main abstraction we need for this talk today uh, is the key value abstraction, which is the common structure amongst all configuration files. Um, and yeah, any configuration file syntax is mappable uh, to uh, key value pairs. And um, yeah, with this abstraction in place, you do not have to care about the concrete syntax uh, which is in use. So here we have example. So the same configuration is expressed in INI and also a little bit more repose uh, in XML. And these are some uh, uh, different uh, parsers which are available in Electra today. So there are also quite some bindings um, available. Uh, yeah, so especially relevant is the Ruby binding, which we will use uh, later uh, for our Puppet uh, integration. Okay, there are uh, currently more than 80 uh, plugins available uh, within Electra. A lot of them are um, involved in the, uh, how to manipulate uh, configuration files. Uh, others are involved, uh, for example, uh, can uh, check uh, configuration for validity. Um, and others, for example, can encrypt uh, values within configuration files um, or can do completely different uh, stuff. There are uh, uh, packages available uh, for Electra in, in various distributions. Um, and yeah, it's already used widely proprietary in proprietary software. Um, and yeah, for example, uh, yeah, here are some examples. Um, yeah, but uh, fr from the beginning of Electra, the goal was to be used uh, by the Floss ecosystem. So, so I'm here uh, to push this a little bit forward. Um, and and uh, there was a lot of positive uh, response in the talk yesterday. So I'm looking forward to see uh, many more applications uh, electrified soon. Okay, so the second part uh, will be uh, this Puppet Electra uh, module. So the, it basically adds two resource types uh, within Puppet. Uh, they are called KDB key and KDB mount. And what they achieve uh, can be uh, shown here. So we have this compiled catalog, which is distributed to the nodes and the Puppet agent, uh, then uh, uses the LibElectra core. And this KDB mount uh, resource type uh, defines this mapping. So we uh, add new, um, uh, we have uh, new uh, the kinds of identifiers which are called the keys and uh, we can map these keys uh, with, uh, with concrete files uh, on the disk and with comp uh, concrete formats. For example, uh, with INI. Um, so that's the KDB mount abstraction, so this mapping here. And then we have the KDB key which can manipulate individual values uh, within these files. So these are the two main abstractions. And, and the main idea in the uh, Puppet Electra is to have configuration settings as first class citizen, so that we are not manipulating co com key, uh, complete configuration files, but we go down uh, to, to individual configuration settings. And uh, the goal of the project is uh, to bring all features from LibElectra to Puppet. Uh, so all the uh, parsers Electra has, the error messages uh, that are provided by Electra, um, and so on. So how does it work? Um, so uh, the KDB key, uh, so as you know in Puppet, you need here a unique identifier. And luckily, Electra exactly has this unique identifier. Every key uh, in, from, from Electra is a unique identifier for a concrete configuration setting. So we directly write it here, and uh, yeah, we will automatically fulfill a puppet uh, a property with it. Yeah, then we have the standard syntax. We can ensure that something is present, and then we can set an, a work group name. So here we actually added the Samba configuration and set a specific workgroup. So it's as simple as that. It's, um, so, and uh, of course, uh, so Electra 
uh, does not manipulate any other settings. So the, complete, the rest of the Samba configuration stays completely untouched. And if we want to be sure that some value is not there, so it should be the default, then we can uh, ensure its absence. Okay, uh, so um, yeah, the, the larger goal of Electra, as I already said, is that application developers directly use Electra. Uh, and in this case, um, nothing needs to be done. We would just write to this path and the Samba configuration file would be edited. Um, yeah, as, yeah, of course we have to uh, bootstrap to get to this situation. And um, so uh, if applications do not uh, already use uh, Electra, uh, we can uh, mount uh, them. And for example, yeah, this here amounts the Samba configuration file. So we say uh, at this uh, Electra key, we want to have this configuration file present. And here we can specify a list of uh, Electra plugins uh, to do so. Um, okay. And uh, yeah, uh, uh, if we, we can even go further. Uh, we can also add a specification uh, because in, in Electra it also is a specification language uh, included. And um, they can also written uh, down directly in Puppet. Um, for example, here we can uh, define uh, simple checks. Uh, for example, a type uh, with short and, and some uh, range. Um, which is actually then not part of the configuration file, but it will land up in a, in a, in a specification namespace uh, of Electra. And here, uh, th um, this is more than imperative puppet code uh, can do, because we can also uh, have local checks. So these checks happen local on the node when, uh, before writing out uh, the configuration. For example, we can check if a, if a file exists uh, in a trivial way. Okay, so is even more comfort possible uh, because it's tiresome to ma manually encode uh, these configuration constraints. Um, and we also have a lot of uh, implicit checks. Some plugins already know how the data, uh, their data look like. Um, and here's a, one of the strengths of Electra. For example, uh, from, uh, from uh, how a host file uh, look like, we automatically know uh, which parts are IP44 addresses uh, and IP46 addresses and how canonical host names uh, look like. And if you use the host plugin, um, as uh, done here, the KDB mount, uh, the host plugin. The host plugin actually recommends global network, so that's not really necessary to write it down. It's uh, only here to, to see the, the larger picture then more, that more than one uh, plugin is involved uh, to do this. Um, and, and then we get um, a complete um, a check for uh, that we only write a valid uh, host file. Uh, so if, if we have here an invalid uh, P address, if this master P address is invalid, we will get uh, a validation on the node uh, where it, a get address info will be invoked. And it actually check of, of for this operating system if this P address can be uh, successfully resolved. And otherwise you get an error message uh, from uh, what get address info uh, says about the P address. Um, and again, uh, the long-term goal is that application developers, because they know best what configuration actually expect, should write the specification. And it's really simple because also the specification is in key value pairs. You simply say this is an IP44 address and, and basically you have already encoded uh, all the information we need to know. Um, so what we actually want, we want to go beyond DevOps. So uh, okay, of course it's nice if you have a group uh, of developers and operations working together, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, it's uh, not always possible. And the longer term goal is that we have a common language to speak uh, between developers uh, and operations so that uh, we, we can communicate uh, more efficiently what we expect as valid uh, configuration. 
Okay, so the last part uh, will be a case in the user study where this puppet lip Electra was used. And uh, first we have done a, a case study. And in the case study, uh, we basically uh, set up the whole infrastructure of Lib Electra. So there's uh, this uh, web server, then uh, the, uh, documentation server, many uh, DNS uh, aliases, and so on. And uh, also a complete uh, build server, continuous integration, and so on. And all these parts were realized uh, with Puppet uh, Lib Electra. Um, yeah, some of these applications directly use uh, Electra, then it's, of course, uh, quite trivial uh, to apply uh, um, Puppet Lib Electra. Um, in two cases, uh, Bernhard, Ber so Bernhard uh, uh, was the one uh, who implemented uh, the um, Puppet Lib Electra and did this case in the user study. And he also implemented, for example, uh, two uh, Ruby plugins uh, which uh, pass and write uh, configuration files. Okay, then a little bit more information about the user study uh, we did. Um, so, uh, yeah, we had uh, four uh, puppet ta uh, tasks in three different variants, uh, and the puppet tasks were, were non-trivial. So you have to manipulate uh, different configuration files in, 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 in different ways and the focus was on configuration file editing. And we compared uh, the usability between KDB Key, the one uh, Puppet provider uh, I talked before, then Augeas, uh, Ini settings, and host. And yeah, and we also did uh, time measurements. So the setup was uh, quite sophisticated and, and robust. Uh, also participated in the study, and for example, David, who will have the next talk, also helped us a lot and also participated with the study. Thank you a lot for that. Um, and uh, yeah, and if, if you worked with this system, you really saw that there was a lot of effort <laughs> invested. And uh, doing this setup, uh, we, we measured how long editing of configuration uh, files uh, needed. Um, and in the first ta to, uh, task, uh, we had uh, host file editing, uh, like shown here. And in the second uh, part, we had a modified Samba configuration. And yeah, as you, uh, so here, these are the median uh, values, and this is a box plot. Uh, so if this uh, percentile 25 and 75, and these are the outliers uh, here. Um, so this already uh, gives a quite clear, a clear picture, but we also uh, used uh, statistics uh, to show if there's a significance, and, uh, there, and it actually was. So the host uh, is significantly faster than Electra, so it actually pays off even with Electra to write dedicated um, uh, um, uh, 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 resource types. Uh, then the INI settings was uh, on par uh, with uh, Electra, but as you know, INI settings is not generic, it only works for INI. Um, yeah, and for maintenance tasks, uh, the, uh, there was not uh, a clear conclusion. Yeah, we also uh, asked uh, about the usability uh, of the systems. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so we, uh, the, um, we asked in a questionnaire to rate the usability of the systems, what is best and uh, uh, to what is worst. And uh, also here, the specialized host plugin was, uh, was liked most. Um, and yeah, uh, in the second, uh, in the settings and Puppet uh, Electra uh, are second uh, best, uh, best to use here. <coughs> Okay, so at the moment we have a, a usable solution uh, yeah, as shown with the, the complete libelector.org um, infrastructure works with this. And for example, with Puppet 4 and Debian Stretch, we have a very reliable uh, solution. Uh, but uh, in, in, yeah, in, in, uh, on other systems, for example, the, uh, the Ruby interpreter, not of the system, but, but another one is used. And uh, here, uh, a Ruby gem uh, would help, which uh, does not exist uh, at the moment. 
Um, and so yeah, uh, t uh, it is still maintained. So, so Bernhard uh, is, uh, is still um, uh, still agreed to maintain it, and I'm also a co-maintainer. But it, it would be great uh, to have help uh, and bring this uh, tool forward. Yeah. Then uh, there is this multi-key support. So Electra um, by itself uh, has transactional support for configuration files. So you can make a large change of many configuration files and Electra makes sure either, uh, either all configuration files are changed or, or nothing happens. Um, but in the current implementation, every KDB key uh, invo uh, makes an, an individual invoke uh, within Electra. And um, yeah, but for some plugins like Augeas, you can't go far if, if you um, need a, a single, uh, if, uh, if, if this is separated. So a multi-key support would be great. And we hope to, uh, yeah, the problem was uh, in, in actually implementing it in a Puppet provider. And we hope uh, that uh, there's a better support from Puppet. Uh, yeah, but as maybe we hear, hear something about it in the next uh, talk. So here a picture of uh, some of the uh, people working on Electra. So, so this is Bernhard who did uh, the, the work. Uh, he, he could not come here, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, uh, Thomas is here. We will wait afterwards outside. So if you want uh, some T-shirts or stickers and, and want to talk with me, uh, I will be outside afterward. So this is a more complete list of people currently working. Uh, on Electra, on, on many topics. Uh, I, I can't uh, go into uh, the details uh, of this. Um, so, yeah, uh, so, yeah, here you can uh, find uh, the puppet uh, Lip Electra, um, and, yeah, and here you can find Electra, and we also have all the data available uh, of this user study. And, yeah, so are there any questions? Yes, so, so the question was, if I have this validation already in the, in the application, uh, let's say if, if there is some way uh, to export it to Electra without defining on it on two places. Uh, yeah, that's a really good question. And, and the goal of Electra is to have it only at uh, one uh, place. Uh, and the current solution of Electra is that, that if you have already specified in the uh, Electra, you can generate uh, the core code you need in the application. So Electra has also a code generator where, where you can uh, put everything uh, within uh, the application. Yeah, so thank you. Is there another question? Yeah. Um, yeah, it's, uh, I think it's in a private repo currently because we, uh, I think uh, the the uh, data of the persons uh, participating in the puppet. So you mean this puppet control and this doc uh, thing. I think it's currently in the same repo and we cannot publish it because it has non-anonymized person data. But, but on request, we can separate it and, and, and give you uh, this. So, so please drop me an email. Thank you. It's a, it's a good idea. Yeah? Um, are there some other questions? Okay, let's get okay. it up for Marcus. Yes, okay. Okay. All right, so five minutes to come back. We'll have David. Go. Okay, great, man. Thanks. Thank you. So, so see you outside. <laughs>